I have a new video for you guys because we need to talk about DaBaby. Not only is this rapper in hot water for his disturbing comments at Rolling Loud, but this man has a history and it is dark. DaBaby is an extremely problematic man from taking his own fan's life to slapping women in the club to fighting airport staff. DaBaby is absolutely out of control. So let's get into it. So many of you guys have been emailing me asking me to talk about this situation. So thank you for the emails. Today we're talking about DaBaby. If you have any other video ideas for me, here is my email listed below. But let's go ahead and talk about who this man is and then we'll get into what he has done. Rapper DaBaby's birth name is Jonathan Lindale Kirk. He's known as DaBaby and he's an American rapper who has released several mixtapes between the years of 2014 and 2018. You guys probably recognize DaBaby, maybe because his music has been on all of the radios, you see his face and his music videos everywhere, and he really started to pop off in 2019. But it's clear to me that this man has mental health issues and he doesn't know how to cope with fame. It's honestly not even my opinion because you can look at what he has been up to these last few years and it's no good. Let's start off by talking about the time that DaBaby took the life of his 19-year-old fan in a Walmart. The 19-year-old that DaBaby shot was named Jalen, and his parents share that there were security footage that showed that DaBaby started getting into a fight with Jalen's friend. Uh, they started fighting, Jalen tried to break it up, and DaBaby pow pow and got him. Jalen's cousin shared more about what happened that night. It was November 5th, 2018. His 19-year-old cousin, Jalen, just got off of work and went to Walmart with his friend, Henry. When Jalen and Henry were walking around Walmart, they spotted DaBaby and they freaked out because at this point he hadn't blown up yet, but they were huge fans. So they approached DaBaby, but he got really agitated. He didn't want to be bothered by any fans and they started to fight going back and forth. Supposedly, DaBaby went and punched Henry. He threw the first punch and Jalen tried to split it up. But then DaBaby's girlfriend at the time punched Jalen in the face. DaBaby was still fighting with Henry and he decided to go and shoot a gun that was unregistered and completely illegal for him to have. Jalen was trying to escape the scene, but unfortunately, he was hit in the back and his life was taken. Unfortunately, it looks like justice wasn't served because none of the key witnesses showed up to court and the state dismissed the charges against the baby. Jalen's parents said in an interview, we feel like we didn't get any justice. To have the guy look at us in court with a smirk like he won the battle, it's truly evil. Now let's switch gears and take it back to early 2020 when DaBaby got physical with a fan at a club. DaBaby did end up apologizing for hitting this woman, but the video footage is really concerning. As you guys can see from the footage, DaBaby was walking through the club and a woman with a phone light got into his face and he decided to hit them. A very dramatic response to a fan who's trying to film you. That's something he doesn't quite understand, that he's like a famous star and people are going to approach you. His apology was absolute crap. He said, I do sincerely apologize. I do. But he's very sorry that there was a female on the other end of that flashlight on their phone, claiming he's not sorry that he hit someone, but he's sorry it was a female. He said in his apology, out of all of those fans, how many people know how to zoom in? Just zoom in instead of popping me in the eye with the phone. So again, he's blaming the fact that this woman was like filming him with the light, got close to his face, and he felt like that was enough justification to go and punch them. Fortunately, the fans weren't having it. They did not like that the baby got physical with her and they booed him out of the venue before he performed any music. But then he went to Instagram to give his apology. Let's go ahead and watch a little bit together. I do sincerely apologize you know i do i'm very sorry that there was a female on the other end of that flashlight on that phone but you know keep in mind i couldn't see you because you got the flash this close to me which is okay it's no problem a lot of people did they didn't put it as close as you put it but a lot of people had flash on me and that's okay you know that's that's what i signed up for that's the risk i take when coming up you know, put on the show for my fans, you know, is, 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 
it's dangerous, you know, I'm blindsided. Cool, fuck it, I'm with that. But out of all them fans, you know, how many people know how to zoom in? Just zoom in. Just that pop me in my motherfucking eye with the phone. So I do apologize. There was a female on the other end, but male or female, I would have responded the same exact way. You know what I mean? Of course, I had security with me the club. They had they, they security and shit. But with me, like, I made security. True fans with respect. I don't like all that rah rah. Coming through, move, watch. His apology becomes a whole rant of excuses. I mean, he's claiming I have security, but at the same time, I would have done the same thing and I would do it again. But there was one incident that went down where the baby was held accountable because he was actually sued after getting physical with someone. A concert promoter is suing the baby for six million dollars for defamation, emotional distress, and everything that happened with the physical attack. Here's a picture that the concert promoter shared online where you can see that his face was busted up. I don't know if this was like right away or a few days after, cause it kind of looks scabbed, but like there's some evidence. So the reason why DaBaby and this concert promoter had some beef was because DaBaby felt like he was cheated out of his performance fee. He was supposed to get $30,000, but he got $20,000. So he wanted that extra 10K. Inside sources tell TMZ that things just went out of control. The report alleges that DaBaby stole the promoter's iPhone, credit card, and $80, doused him in apple juice, and then DaBaby's bond was set at $1,500. He was actually only in jail from Thursday through Saturday, and then he was let go. It's not clear if that concert promoter ever got the $6 million they were suing DaBaby for, but we do know that he at least was held accountable for getting physical with that man and spent some time in jail, but it looks like it wasn't much because he is DaBaby and he can get out of anything. Before we get into the homophobic comments, I do want to mention one last thing that I found very bizarre when it comes to DaBaby, because he had an older brother who unfortunately took his own life, but DaBaby's response to everything was very cryptic. In 2020, Glenn Johnson, the older brother of the baby, took his own life at the age of 34. It's actually really scary to think about because his brother shared a video to social media on Instagram where he was crying in a car, holding a weapon, preparing to take his own life. And then he did. But then DaBaby had some thoughts on social media. DaBaby went to Instagram and shared some of the lyrics to his song intro from his 2019 album. The lyrics read, my brother be thinking that we don't love him and let him struggle like we ain't family. Like I won't give up all. I gotta see you. And then he says a slur. So uh, kind of weird that he's posting this about his brother at that time. It seems a little bit like, I don't know not really emotional. Like if I just lost my sibling, I don't know if I'll be able to post like, damn bruh, with a broken heart. I just feel like it's kind of like dismissive of it all, but who really knows? Now that we've talked a little bit about DaBaby's past, let's talk about what went down at Rolling Loud. He made some really offensive comments. So I wanna give you guys a trigger warning. Honestly, this whole video should have probably had a trigger warning, but let's go ahead and watch that clip together. You didn't show up today with HIV, AIDS, any of them deadly transmitted diseases that'll make you die two, three weeks, put a cell phone like the up. Lady, if you smell like water, put a cell phone like the up. Fellas. Lights up. Fellas, if you ain't sucking in the parking lot, put your cell phone like Let's be up. real about this Yeah, keep it real. Some of y'all suspect as a mom. Let's be real. Okay, so I'm gonna have to block out a lot of the words in that clip, but I'm sure you guys have seen it yourself. He made really offensive comments about women, about the LGBTQ plus community, and those living with HIV and AIDS. And I do want to be upfront with you guys that it is a little bit personal to me because I am part of the LGBT like plus community. Also, I did have an uncle who passed away from HIV AIDS. So when I hear about this type of like rhetoric and the stigma is being pushed, it's really, it does personally affect me and I am bothered by DaBaby because I was a former fan but I want to be upfront with you guys that I will never support him again because of this. It's different if he like acknowledged what he did was wrong but he doesn't think 
any of this was wrong at all. He made claims that people with HIV or AIDS will pass away within two or three weeks, insinuating this misunderstanding around the disease and further pushing the stigma. This article writes, if the baby were the kind of person who could hear criticism, learn, and grow, he may have been able to apologize in a heartfelt manner and the controversy could have just been over. But sadly, DeBaby has proven to us that he doesn't care about this and he's truly not sorry. It almost seems like DeBaby is trying to make this worse for himself. Let's go ahead and talk a little bit about the Dua Lipa situation. So there was this song that was pretty popular by Dua Lipa called Levitating. It also featured DeBaby. But after everything went down, Dua Lipa didn't want anything to do with DeBaby, which makes sense to me because I wouldn't want to be associated with him either. She posted to her Instagram story, I'm surprised and horrified at DeBaby's comments. I really don't recognize this as the person I worked with. She stands with the LGBTQ community and we need to come together to fight the stigma and ignorance around HIV and AIDS. DeBaby has been responding to people low key and directly. He was liking some tweets about Dua Lipa. He liked a tweet that wrote, it's funny how Dua Lipa's song Levitating is only number one because of DeBaby. You're welcome because I only heard of you because of DeBaby. He also liked two other tweets that were suggesting that Dua Lipa should remove the song off of streaming services with DaBaby. But it wasn't just Dua Lipa who was condemning DaBaby's comments. He was kicked out from a bunch of music festivals. DaBaby was kicked out of Music Midtown. He was kicked from Lollapalooza, which they actually put a full-blown statement about DaBaby, which is kind of crazy to think about because like Lollapalooza pays millions and millions of dollars. And if you're kicked off one time, he's probably never going to be welcome back. He was also kicked from Austin City Limits Music Festival. He he was kicked from the iHeart Music Festival, which is huge. And finally, he was kicked from Park Life. Honestly, there might even be more festivals he was kicked out from that we don't even know about, but there have been handfuls dropping him. I don't like the idea that we're just trying to cancel this man and remove his work and keep him out of festivals and things like that. The point of trying to kick him out of these festivals is to force him to realize what he did was wrong. I don't feel like people are just trying to go and cancel him for fun. Like what he said is so effed up. And if you don't think so, then that's just like, we can't have a conversation because if you don't think that that was unacceptable, what he said on stage, I don't know how to reason with you. But the baby has tried to save face, but it's only really gone back to kick him in the butt because it's not looking like he understands what he did wrong or how to fix it. Last week, DaBaby actually went to Instagram to go and apologize and kind of explain what really happened. Um, let's go ahead and react to a little bit of that. I'm gonna address this weak ass internet one time and I'm gonna get back to giving my love to my fans. See what I'm saying? Because what me and my fans do at the live show, it don't concern you on the internet or you bitter on the internet. It's not your business. You know what I'm saying? Like what I do at a live show is for the audience at the live show. So right here, he's straight up telling us he does not care what he said. He said he only performs for his fans at the show, and that stage moment was for his fans, not for all these people on the internet. Again, just discrediting that what he said was actually wrong and blaming it on this other group of people because his fans stand with him. It'll never translate correctly to somebody looking at a little five, six second clip from their goddamn crib on their phone. It just don't work like that. Like, you know, because regardless of what you talking about, how the internet and twisted up my word, me and all my fans at the show, the gay ones and the straight ones, we turned the fuck up. I'm talking about my boy that was at the front of the stage, left over there by where I jumped at. Ask him. He got clips all on it. The whole night was recording. We were turned the whole night. My boy had the crop top on. Front row, yeah, out there in that, in that jungle, in that water. Yeah, he out there, he's standing on the rail, got them cutting up, he know the words, I saw him, I'm, I'm rapping them with him. Yeah, the hell y'all talking about, y'all, shut the f up. You, you niggas that wasn't, that ain't at the show, the show is for the niggas who paid the money and, and took the time out of their life to come enjoy the show. Not you niggas watching it on the internet at the crib, no. Just get your tickets and come with the live show killer, gay or straight. Don't let these fuckers hell. I, I say if you don't got AIDS, put a cell phone light up. 
I said, if you ain't said in the parking lot, put So now he's trying to switch the narrative and claim that what he actually said wasn't what he said. And honestly, he's just making so much worse, in my opinion. Like, oh, God, please stop. Like, he was trying to say, like, oh, there was a gay guy in the front who was wearing a crop top, rapping all the songs and stuff. Like, OK, it does not change what you said. Like, he's just trying to flip the script and change the story. But we saw what happened. There's one part in DaBaby's apology that I find so offensive and ignorant that he talks about his gay fans and claims that they're not nasty or whatever, but the other ones are. Again, pushing the stigma that like HIV and AIDS are like just a gay disease, and it's really not. Because even my gay fans don't got an AIDS, stupid. They don't got AIDS. My gay fans, they take care of themselves. They ain't going for that. They ain't, they ain't no nasty gay See what I'm saying? They ain't no junkies. You know what I'm saying? On the street. Man, here you talking about. Most people, when they get in trouble like this, they go silent and then we don't really hear about them. But DaBaby has been very active on social media and he's honestly been using this situation as a PR move to push his music. He's got a music video out for the song, giving what it's supposed to give. This music video was shot before the offensive comments, but he did make an edit to the video and posted it to Instagram. In the video, there's a moment where this pops up on screen and it says, don't fight hate with hate and rain bow colors and he writes my apologies for being me the same way you want the freedom to be you so again he's trying to justify that his like his moment at rolling loud where he was saying this was just his personality and like you guys can do you let me do me and we can all just be happy but that's not how it works you're discriminating against populations of the public and they're not going to just accept this as you being you and like i said earlier the baby just makes this worse and worse for himself he went to twitter and he was tweeting some really bizarre things in one tweet he acknowledges that those who have been affected by aids and hiv have the right to be upset and he's sorry to them but he's not sorry to the lgbt community he said i ain't tripping on y'all do you y'all business is y'all business again that doesn't really add up with him talking about some when sucking, you know, in the parking lot. <laughs> Here's another tweet where he's trying to, again, flip the narrative and he brings up like a cop and how, you know, cops and Black Lives Matter and things like that. Again, trying to bring something into this that isn't really related. In this tweet, he writes, and for any brands, networks or artists that like to profit off of black rappers influence on the culture without understanding it or having the patience to deal with what comes with the position we play in our culture. Keep your money next time. He says a slur and that they are humans, too. Again, I can understand that there there are definitely some issues when it comes to like black rappers and the culture and brands and networks and not respecting them. But again, he's trying to flip this into something that's not actually about that, because if he were to properly apologize for what he said initially, there wouldn't have been all these brands, networks and artists turning against him. But according to his own Twitter, he sees this as an opportunity for him to become an icon. He claims that God is ready for him to be an icon and he's ready to accept the challenge. If this is what you want to be known for, then Go ahead. And that's what everyone sees you as. So I'm glad we all know. The baby did end up apologizing a third, a third time. Is this a third? I don't even know. I wouldn't even consider any of these apologies, but he posted something to his Instagram, which was quickly removed. I'm not even going to waste your time by reading this BS apology because it is a decent apology. I mean, he claims supposedly that uh, other people came to him with information and resources, and now he understands more and he's really sorry. But it's clear to me, and I think everyone on the internet, that he did not write this. Definitely a PR person wrote this, and it was removed shortly after, a few days after. So did it really mean anything to him? No. But there have been some celebrities who have been standing with the baby, like rapper T.I., which if you guys have not seen my videos about him, definitely go check them out. But he believes that the baby isn't wrong for this, and he's trying to drag down other people at the same time. On Instagram, T.I. claims that if Little Nas X can go and do all this crap in peace, so should the baby. And he added the hashtag equality. T.I. also said that he respects gay people who are living their truth, like Little Nas X, but added that Little Nas X's performance and music videos ain't for him, and he wouldn't want his kids watching that either. Um, Okay, why is Lil Nas X being brought into this at all? He's not related to this at all. What T.I. is trying to say there is that 
Lil Nas X should be able to be as gay as he wants to be, and that's okay. And DaBaby should be able to be as homophobic as he wants to be, and that's okay. But the difference is, being homophobic, like, that's... Lil Nas X can go live his best life, and you shouldn't be affected by that. DaBaby being homophobic and pushing this narrative and, you know, sending this message out to all of his fans, that's extremely damaging to the community. And as people like myself, who used to listen to DaBaby's music, I feel hurt. There have been other celebrities who have been speaking out against DaBaby. Like Madonna, she posted an Instagram caption explaining to DaBaby why he's wrong and hoping that he goes and tries to make this better. Demi Lovato also posted a bunch about DaBaby and really tried to switch the narrative when it comes to HIV AIDS. I'm really appreciative that they stepped in in this situation because we really do need the support of these celebrities. It is so much easier for them to just be quiet and to keep the peace, but to go and stand up against this rapper who doesn't think he's done anything wrong, that is power. At the end of the day, DaBaby is wrong, and I don't think that that's something that's up for debate. It's wrong for what he did there, and I think it shows everything that's happened after the fact that he is wrong, that he's losing this work, that he's posting these BS apologies and really just digging his own grave. And if you look at his past, like what we talked about in the beginning, I feel like this man is extremely unstable. I mean, I found videos online of him fighting people in airports, just like getting physical with people randomly in public, and it doesn't seem like he's got great coping mechanisms when it comes to his emotions, so I really hope the baby can go and get some intensive therapy and to understand what is like wrong in his life that's causing him to like fight out against these people and to make these comments and just to I don't know, just to make it worse for himself. I mean, nobody wants to watch this. Everyone wanted him to make it better, but he only made it worse, and that shocked the world. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know it was different content for my channel, so comment below if you enjoyed this. If you have any other video ideas, here's my email below. But let's go ahead and open a P.O. Box package item. This one looks like it's from Maddie, and it looks like she's located in the United States. So let's go ahead and see. Ouch. What's going on here? I was opening a P.O. Box package last night for a video that's probably going to be coming out next week. And I really hurt myself. <laughs> but you'll, you guys are going to see that soon. This thing's very sharp. Oh my gosh, too sharp. And wow, this is really packaged well. Let me try to open it and then we'll come back. Ouch, like my thumb is so torn up, please. Okay, so I got the package open. Last night I really hurt my thumb when I was like opening something and now it's got like a cut on it. So let's go ahead and open this letter right here. I don't know exactly what's going on here. Maybe it's a small business. Maybe it's just like a little letter. Um, Let's see, it says thank you. Oh, some things flew. Okay, so we got some cards right here. So it's definitely a small business, which everything will be linked below. It looks like they have an Etsy and an Instagram. Hey Sloan, love from Northern California. I love your videos and I know you like to support small businesses, so I thought I would send some goodies. Oh, that's awesome. Yes, Maddie, and I will list everything below. Let's go ahead and see what she sent me here. Um, can you imagine if like an animal came out? That's what I'm so scared of. Okay, so it looks like this right here is a, is it a pin? Oh, it's a necklace. Oh my gosh, look at that. It's like a rock on this necklace. It looks like it's literally a, um, like it looks like it's a fossil in my opinion. Like why does that look like a fossil? Oh my gosh, uh, so pretty. Uh, I love this. This is so good. Oh my gosh, I really love this. Thank you so much, Maddie. Is this a shark tooth? Like, what is this? I need someone to comment below. That is awesome. Wow, I love that. Oh, I'm going to have to check out your Etsy shop. And then it looks like, oh, I love that you... Oh, what is this? Oh my gosh, it's a little doggy keychain. So cute. Uh, so it's a little, like, doggy... Oh my gosh. A little doggy keychain. That's so cool. Oh, and did you make this with like resin and stuff? I love how it has like little flowers in it. I don't know if you guys can see. And then let's go ahead and see. It looks like we've got one more thing right here. And, oh, is it another? Oh, what is that? It's obviously some type of tool. I'm going to have to ask my boyfriend like what this is. It's either something to like scratch something. Maybe it's a scratching. Like, I don't know. A bottle opener. It's really cool though, and it's well made. You can tell when something wasn't made properly with resin because it will be sticky, but this was cured really nicely, so thank you so much. I definitely love everything you sent me, especially this necklace. Like this necklace is so iconic and I love whatever's on it. So thank you so much, Maddie. Go and check out her shop below and I will see you guys in a new video soon. Bye guys.